The Magic School Bus Inside the Human Body Written by Joanna Cole Illustrated by Bruce Deegan When you hear this sound It's time to turn the page We're going to learn about ourselves This should interest you, Arnold I can't take the pressure. It all began when Ms. Frizzle showed our class a film strip about the human body. We knew trouble was about to start because we knew Ms. Frizzle was the strangest teacher in the school. A film strip is only the beginning, you know. Yeah, I bet she has books about this, too. When's recess? The very next day, the Frizz made us do an experiment on our own bodies. Ooh, weird. Then she announced that we were going on a class trip to the Science Museum. We were going to see an exhibit about how our bodies get energy from the food we eat. Your cells need energy to help you grow, move, talk, think, and play. Just being in Ms. Frizzle's class takes all my energy. The trip started out like any other trip. We rode to the museum in the old school bus. Along the way, we stopped at a park for lunch. Leftover fish sticks? Ick! I'll trade you these terrific fish sticks for that horrible peanut butter and banana sandwich. Forget it. Take a look at her shoes. Please, I'm eating. When it was time to go, everyone got back on the bus. Everyone but Arnold. He was still at the picnic table, daydreaming and eating a bag of cheesy wheezies. When you eat, your body digests the food so your cells can use it to make energy. Hurry up, Arnold, called Ms. Frizzle. She reached for the ignition key, but instead she pushed a strange little button nearby. Arnold's really out to lunch. At once, we started shrinking and spinning through the air. From inside, we couldn't see what was happening. All we knew was that we landed suddenly. Hey, where's the bus? And then we were going down a dark tunnel. We had no idea where we were. But as usual, Miss Frizzle knew. She said we were inside a human body, going down the esophagus, the tube that leads from the mouth to the stomach. Most of us were too upset about leaving Arnold behind to pay much attention. Where's Arnold? He got left! That's what happens when you eat junk food. I thought we were going to the museum. There's been a slight change of plans. We're being digested instead. We are now passing into the stomach, said Ms. Frizzle. It wasn't exactly quiet in there. The walls of the stomach moved in and out, churning and mashing the food into a thick liquid. The bus was turning round and round, and digestive juice splashed the windows. Now we knew how it felt to be a hamburger. Roll up your windows, children! Yuck! Miss Frizzle drove to the bottom of the stomach. We'll drive through this opening to the small intestine, she said. In the small intestine, food is broken down into molecules, tiny enough for the body cells to use. I want to go home. But this is educational. Does education have to be this messy? I don't feel so good. Maybe it was something I ate. Poor kid. The small intestine was a coiled-up hollow tube. The inner walls of the tube were covered with tiny fingers called villi. 
In the villi are tiny blood vessels. Food molecules are taken into these blood vessels, said Miss Frizzle. Once the food is in the blood, it can travel all over the body. We felt ourselves getting even smaller. And Miss Frizzle started driving into one of the villi. She was going straight into a blood vessel. Class, the bus is following the path of the food molecules into the blood. I wish Arna were here to see this. Yeah, it's so gross. You mean this body thinks we're food? That's better than being waste. Now we were in the blood, but it did not look red. Blood is not just a red liquid, explained Miss Frizzle. Blood is made of cells floating in a clear fluid. Those cells look like red rubber saucers, someone called out. Those are red blood cells, Miss Frizzle said. Red blood cells carry oxygen from the lungs to all the cells of the body. <gasps> Did you see that? Here and there, a white blood cell was busy destroying disease germs. White blood cells are like soldiers protecting your body from enemies, said Ms. Frizzle. The white blood cell ate the germ. That's disgusting. Looking back, we saw a white blood cell chasing the bus. We'll be safer with the red blood cells, kids, said Ms. Frizzle. She reached for the handle that controlled the bus's doors. Don't do it, we cried. But when did Ms. Frizzle ever listen? The doors of the bus flew open. That white blood cell must think the school bus is a germ. Well, the bus is pretty dirty. We were swept out of the bus and into the bloodstream. Everybody, hitch a ride! Called the Frizz. Each kid grabbed a red blood cell as it went by. Our last glimpse of the bus was when it went into another blood vessel, with the white blood cell right behind it. Why can't we just have spelling tests like other kids? We'll never get out of here now. These red blood cells have turned dull red. They need more oxygen. Meanwhile... Oh my gosh! I'm lost! Don't panic. The next thing we knew, we had flowed into the heart. Inside the heart are four hollow spaces called chambers, said Ms. F. Each chamber is a little pump. The two chambers on the right side of the heart took in used blood from the body and pumped it to the lungs. Have a heart, Ms. Frizzle. Get us out of here. In the lungs, the red cells picked up fresh oxygen. We get new oxygen from the air each time we breathe in. We get rid of a waste gas, carbon dioxide, each time we breathe out. My heart is pounding. Take a deep breath. You'll be okay. From the lungs, our red blood cells carried us back to the heart. This time, we were on the left side of the heart, the side that pumps fresh blood back to the body again. Kids! It looks as if these red blood cells are on their way to the brain, said Ms. Frizzle. Look, when the red blood cells pick up oxygen, they turn bright red. Class, those brain cells need more oxygen. We'll never get home unless we find the bus. Maybe we'll find it in the brain. Which way back to school? Use your brain. When we reached the brain, we let go of our red blood cells and squeezed out of the blood vessel. It was hard to believe that this wrinkled gray blob was the control center of the body. Children, we are walking on the cerebral cortex, the pinkish gray outer layer of the brain. Without it, we couldn't see, hear, smell, 
touch, taste, talk, move, or think. Ms. Frizzle said the brain is made of billions of busy nerve cells. They are constantly sending and receiving messages from the eyes, ears, muscles, and other parts of the body. Do you think we'll be smarter after this? I hope so. Where's the bus? Let's see. Ms. Frizzle was driving that way to the museum, so our school must be this way. Good thinking. We left the head by climbing down the bones of the spine. Inside the bones was the spinal cord, a thick bundle of nerve cells stretching from the brain. Smaller bundles of nerve cells branched out from each side of the spinal cord. These carried nerve messages to all the parts of the body. The spinal cord connects the brain with the nerves that go to the body. I think I'm losing my nerve. Don't look down. We followed some nerves that went to the leg muscles. The leg muscles were working hard. They needed a lot of energy. They used up a lot of food and oxygen from the blood. The heart was beating faster to carry fresh blood to the muscle cells. Children, we are sliding on a muscle. From here, we'll return to the bloodstream. I wonder where Arnold is now. I have the strangest feeling he's close by. I'll get there sooner if I run. <sighs> the more active you are, the faster your heart beats. We entered a nearby blood vessel. The blood was moving so fast, we were afraid we would lose each other. But at that moment, the school bus floated by. What a relief. We jumped on and went up through the heart and lungs again, just the way we went before. Class, we're on the way out of the body. Relax, we're going back now. I can't relax as long as I see blood cells outside the window. When we emerged from the bloodstream, we were in a huge open space. Where are we? Asked a kid. Ms. Frizzle explained. Children, this is the nasal cavity. The what? We asked. The inside of the nose, said the Frizz. Suddenly, we heard a deafening noise. It sounded like, uh, 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 uh. We're in a nose? I am so grossed out. This time, she's gone too far. I think I'm going to sneeze. Use your hanky. Then we heard... Shoo! Class, the sound you hear is a sneeze. Anything in the nose can make you sneeze. It could be a bit of dirt or dust or some bacteria. In this case, it happens to be a school bus. A tremendous blast of air hit the bus full force. We flew forward, spinning around and around. Children, prepare for landing. Please remain seated until the school bus has come to a complete stop. Is she for real? Uh, 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 Gesundheit. We were going so fast, we couldn't see anything but we could tell we were getting bigger. Then, thud, we landed. There we were, back at school. And there was Arnold, in the school parking lot, blowing his nose. We're back! Look, there's Arnold! Arnold, we said. The trip was amazing. You should have been there. Where were you? Where were you? Back in the classroom, it was business as usual. Ms. Frizzle made us draw a chart of the human body for the bulletin board. Can we slip these kidneys in behind the intestines? K 
kidneys? Liver? I guess we didn't have time to go there. Thank goodness. What a trip. I'd like to go to the lungs again. I'd rather go to Hawaii. Hey! At last, everything was quiet in Ms. Frizzle's class. Everything, of course, except her dress. She must buy her clothes in outer space. Don't give her any ideas. Stop! Take this test. Do not watch TV yet. Do not get a snack yet. Do not play a video game yet. <laughs> 